Today's video is all about how to get a huge return investment when you renovate your house. Both if you're hiring a contractor and especially if you're doing it yourself. Stick with us, we got all the best information that's in the market. You're gonna be surprised what's not on the list. So let's get on with the show. All right, yes, and remember to hit the like button. Good point, guys. Everything you can do as far as interaction and liking, it helps to promote this video down the road. And this is information we're really gonna try to promote. Hopefully YouTube takes this and runs with it because this is gonna help a lot of people, I think, kind of sort out the cobwebs. So what we're talking about today is return on investment. And it's a very difficult subject matter to handle because there's a lot of factors that go into this. First of all, let's just talk about your home should be considered an investment. Um, there is a lot to do with maintenance on a home, but there's a lot of opportunity in the world of investing in your home. And what I wanna talk about today is return on investment and the factors that go into this, okay? One of them is location. Huge, where you live affects the return on your investment. Most guys I know in the trades who are running around in circles picking up stuff, they go to one store, they go to the box store because they only have time to make one stop in the morning, they get their stuff and they go. And they pass that cost on to you, all right? And that result, results in about a 60% return on investment for almost every project that's going on. And that's different than what the world would let you know. Traditionally, if you're watching TV, you'll find the shows will glamorize renovation and they'll talk about we put money in and we made a fortune on the other side. And that can all be true to a certain extent, but you are going to be in a safe place if when you're renovating your house, you have it in mind that the cost of the material and the direct cost of the labor is about what you're gonna get back, okay? All the costs of running the business and all the taxes that are built into the system, you're not gonna get a return on that. And that kind of works into this whole 60% return concept, okay? As a business, about 25% of your cost is material, all right? And then another 25% is the direct labor, and then a little bit of profit or labor for yourself, but the rest of it is operation and taxes. And there's incredible correlation there with what you're gonna get back. What ends up happening is you get 60 cents on the dollar back. So you really wanna start thinking, okay, when do I wanna renovate my home? When it's time to sell, does that make any sense? Because I'm only gonna get 60 cents on the dollar back. But today, we're gonna to talk about all those projects that have a great return. And on top of that, because I teach DIY, I'm gonna show you all the projects that you can DIY that have massive return, all right? So now that we got that understood, we get an idea where the pricing and the concepts go, we can jump right into this. Whew, all right. So when I'm talking to our DIYers, I'm talking to people who've got a variety of different skills. The first skill I want everybody to learn is how to paint, all right? Now I'm gonna add this later, but forgive me, I'm gonna put a card in this video. If you wanna learn how to paint as a DIYer so that you can do a great job and make money, click the video over here, which is not available during the live show. <laughs> now, if you know how to paint, you've got two advantages. One, painting, as far as return on investment is concerned, is very low cost investment, right? It's a few gallons of paint, some basic tools, and mostly sweat equity on your part. Now, painting the exterior of your house, if it's a, if it's a house that can be painted, like aluminum siding or wood siding or brick, or stone or stucco, okay? If you paint the exterior of your house, on average, you've got about a 5% increase in the total valuation of your property. That is massive because the average home in America is $200,000. I know some of you are gonna be like, whoa, where do you get a house that cheap? And some of you are gonna go, whoa, where do you get a house that expensive? <laughs> Reality is, is at 200,000 bucks, it gives you about a three or four bedroom home, basic across the board, you know, average town size home, all right? And if you can get 5% return, that's 10,000 bucks. Do you know how much paint you can buy for $10,000? It's unbelievable. You can paint an entire home on the exterior for about 10 or 15 gallons, maybe 30 bucks a gallon, $1,500 investment, and you got a $10,000 return. That is awesome. I like cutting and rolling. For me, it's very relaxing. It's kind of like I get to the end of the job, I get to paint and relax, take the stress notches down a few, 
this paint spraying has all kinds of inherent risk attached to it, right? You bump into something, you pull the trigger by accident, psh, well, before you know it, you've painted the floor. Ah, and you don't need that in your life, right? Okay. <laughs> anyway, that was number one. We're going to move on. To and I got, I am playing with my pen and I just got in trouble for Max. That's awesome. And one second. Alrighty. Whoa. Uh, beverage break. All right. Let's get on to the next one. All right. Next thing we're going to talk about is the number two rental that has a huge return investment. And that is replacing your garage door. Not very sexy, I know, but hey. If you have a garage door that's in a bad state of repair, all right, or is really ugly, or a horrible color and you've painted your house, changing it is a huge thing. This is not a DIY, all right? Changing your garage door, and I have this policy, sometimes DIY means knowing when to phone somebody to do something for you, okay? Garage door installation specialists are just that. Their trucks are tooled for one purpose, to install a door, that's it. They're good at it, they're quick at it, and because of that, they specialize exactly in just one thing. They're able to deliver a very cost-effective result. So, when you would do a garage door, you actually get, bum bum bum, a 97% return on investment. I know, and there's a reason for that, because you're making something beautiful that was ugly. All right, so, if you're gonna get almost every dollar back, do yourself a favor. Don't get involved in the world of springs and cables and heavy equipment and all kinds of technology you don't understand, that's a skill set. There's just no sense bothering to learn because you can get your money back. If I can give someone $100 and get $97 back a day later and something awesome happened at my house, I am all over that like white on rice. All right. Number three, manufactured stone veneer. I know. And this goes against my thinking, but I have to say it because it is such a huge return. I think it's a trend. I think it's going to be a long trend, but I think it's a trend. And I think over the last 10 years, we've seen a lot of this stone come and go as far as quality is concerned and design and style and color. And they keep trying to make it work. But I just feel like $20 a square foot for something on the outside of your house is just really expensive. But apparently, the stats don't lie, right? This research that's been done does not lie. If you pay 8000 bucks to do... 100 square feet of this stone on your house, you're going to get $8,000 of the value back. Personally, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't even want to get it. Uh, I think if you're going to put stone on your house, you put stone on your house and you put stone on the whole house. You don't just go three feet up and then go siding from there because you're cheap. But the point is, in some climates, having the first three feet of stone is actually really valuable, especially when you get all the snow onto something that's sexy. Number four, return on investment installing vinyl windows. And I use the word vinyl because they're maintenance free and they have a much higher return investment than wood or aluminum, if they even sell those anymore. I don't know, maybe in some areas. Vinyl windows, I'm just gonna go back to one of my cheat sheets here that I got, all right? Bear with me. Vinyl windows is a really interesting market. I have told people in times past that vinyl windows are one of those things you've got to be really careful with because you can buy a basic vinyl window and the technology from 1980 is almost the same as it is today on the lower end of the cost price point. And it's about as efficient a window as you're ever going to need. Windows are only ever about an R5 value. If you lock that in for insulation quality, you got to spend a lot of money to get anything higher than five, like thousands of dollars a window. And there's no return on that energy savings. So don't buy the lie that I'm going to get the energy efficient window. If you want energy efficient, keep them shut. That's the best advice out there. Now, when it comes to windows, the average house costs about $16,000 to do all the windows. Wow. Okay. Seems like a expensive product, but it gets you about a $12,000 return. And it's pretty. And if you're getting rid of aluminum or single pane or old wood ones, you are going to get some energy efficiency. And over the course of a few years, you'll get a lot of that money back. And so it does make sense to do it. Now, as a DIY project, <laughs> instead of giving 80% back, as a DIY project, you're going to be spending about $4,500 on material there. And if you listen to our 
third segment, and I'll show you how to shop, you're going to find out that you can actually buy those windows for a lot less than that, like about less than half of that cost, okay? Window installation is a labor business, all right? It is just cut it out, stick it in, seal it up, make sure it's square and operational, and then they move on. It's not rocket science, right? There is some techniques and stuff, and we do have a video you can click right here, unless you're watching the live show. But the point is this, if you have good windows and you do it yourself, you can actually make a lot of money on your house, all right? It's not a very difficult skill. Generally speaking, to install a window, it's hand tools. You might need a reciprocator, like a sawzall, in order to cut the old ones out. But after that, it's just shims, screws, and foam, and a level, and that's it. If you want air passing through your house because you don't have air conditioning, keep that in mind. Make sure that you get um, the right kind of window to let a lot of air through. Um, if you want UV protection and low E argon gas added to your windows, don't let somebody take you to the bank, okay? Those additives are actually cost about four bucks a window, right? So don't let them upgrade you. It's not a big thing. It's not like... Um, you know, getting an extra set of winter tires or something with a, with a car for free. They're not doing you a favor. The, the, the feature here is really silly. It's almost, it's a no-brainer. Every window nowadays gets low E argon gas and, and it's just it's silly. Um, but if you're going to do a siding and window project together, resizing works. Bigger windows sell, lots of natural light. If you're going open concept house and you don't have lots of windows, you lose a lot of appeal. Okay, you need to have the light. It just works together. But make sure you consider the windows with your furniture and from the beginning, right? If you're gonna start making modifications to your home, have a drawing, know what it's gonna look like when you're finished so you can make a plan and stick to it so that you're not changing as you go, all right? Siding, 75% return investment. And the reason is this, that stat is related to hiring a crew, all right? If you do the siding on your own, you're gonna make almost 300% your investment because siding is relatively inexpensive. Um, once you know where to shop, you'll make even more than that on your investment. But the point is this, um, you're buying a lot of labor and paying a lot of taxes to accrue. And so even with that, you're still getting a 75% return because it is so quick to put up, okay? And it makes a dramatic difference having a brand new facade. Now. Roofing, 60% return. Every house has a roof. It's not a sexy element on any house, no matter how much they try to make new architectural shingles or go back to steel and make sexy new looking steel. It's a roof. It's part of the water diversion system. It's one of the reasons we have a house in the first place, right? So we don't die. People don't instinctively drive down the street and go, wow, what a roof, I gotta buy that house. There's nothing about a roof that says, wow, I gotta buy that house. Having a good roof is important but I've never heard of a roof selling a house before. So you're only ever gonna get a 60% return. It's boring, it's not attractive, it's not emotional. That's why, all right? Um, now, I've gone through a whole lot of lists here. And if you'll notice, there's one thing in common. These are all outside projects. <laughs> the painting, the windows, the siding, the stone. Um, Building a deck or a patio, you're about 80%, 70%, depending where you live. Um, the doing the front door, good landscaping, right? Building a fence, it's higher than normal. The reason for that is when you fix up the outside of your house, it sells. People are more concerned about what other people think about them than they think about where they live themselves. Bottom line. So, and the systems are simple. Generally, almost everything to do with the outside of the house is installation based. Right? It's somebody who's a specialist. You have a siding guy, that's what he does. You got a roofer, that's what he does. You got a, you got a painter, that's what he does. You got a window guy, that's what he does. Even when you hire the crew, they're installers. And installers get better return than renovators because renovations are multiple people being managed. All right? And that complex system has problems and has challenges and faults and mistakes and rework and all of these things and it's so, it's so complex that they have to increase their margins in order to do the business or they're not going to do it because it's high risk, okay? So that's why your return is going to be basically down to 60% anytime you renovate. There's one thing you can do inside a house that actually does a really good job in return on investment. 
and that's a remodeled kitchen. I think one of our other videos before, we talked about the difference between a remodel and a renovation. Remodeling is basically you're working with the mechanical systems that are there, you're not opening the walls, you're not upgrading the plumbing or the wiring or anything else. You're just taking away the finishes and reinstalling them. Third house on the street is you, and you've put in crown molding, new baseboards, and you've painted the place. Bam! You're the one with the offer. Okay? Now that's not a return on investment conversation, but do you want to be on the market for five days or five years? I have something here. It's a handout I'm going to give to everybody in the class. Okay? Here you go, Max. All right. There we go. Handouts are done. Um, what I'm going to do is, Max, I'm going to get you to pan over to the TV screen that I got. Right over here. Let's zoom right in here. And I'm going to give you a tool, okay? Um, I'm going to have to get the name of this for you guys because it's not on the screen. There we go. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. This is what's called the cost versus value report. And if you go online, you just type that in, cost versus value report. You're going to get... Uh, a map and you're going to get different geographical regions all around the United States and you can pick yours, put in your information, uh, it's a name and address, you can click the boxes, you don't want to get bothered with, with spam mail, uh, and then they're going to give you a downloaded file and the file will look something like this. Okay, now this is a, uh, a small town, I call it small town, it's about 270,000 people, it's Durham, North Carolina. Shout out to everybody in North Carolina, we're talking about you today. And what it does here is it gives a list of all of the different kind of projects for the different valuations of the homes, right? So kitchen remodel, mid-range, minor work, major work, which means there's a difference between changing the counters and the backsplash and flooring versus gutting the kitchen and starting over. Those are both remodels, okay? And then there's kitchen renovation, which is a different category altogether. Where is it on here? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, major remodel, sorry, my bad. And there's mid-range and upscale, and they'll give you different prices, and it'll give you the national average on your cost of recovery, the national average on the resale value of those projects, the national average on the job cost for those projects, okay? This is a really valuable tool because it answers the question, what about my town? What about where I live? And you'll see, for instance here, let's find something that looks a little bit skewed. Bum, bum, bum. That's a great one. Now, what's this? <laughs> entry door replacement. Okay. Now, in this town, you know, there's only a 61% return on investment for an entry door replacement. Costs about $1,700. You get $1,000 back. Now, you come over here. The national average is 75%. Okay. The actual national average is $1,800, which is almost the same, but you're getting a $1,300 return. And so a chart like this will help you to decide, in my small town, what are the pros and cons? What are the best options for me for, for work? And, and compared to the national average, but most importantly, compared to my town. Okay, because that's where you live. That's the market you're competing in. You can use this tool to shop different districts and take a look at the national averages. This is 2019 data. It's very up to date. Um, <laughs> you will know what is going on in the neighborhood where you're living and you'll be able to make your decisions based on this information. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick. Am I posting a link for that? You know what? That's a great question, Johnny. Yes, we'll put the link in the description of the video. I understand that when we're talking about stuff like this, not everything is perfect, right? 70%, 69%, 68.5%. It gives you the rough idea. You need to have something to help steer. Right? When we're driving down the road, the lane isn't just as wide as your car. They give you a little extra room on each side so that, you know, nothing has to be perfect. But having the ability to know exactly where you're going, give or take, the direction is more important than the actual numbers, right? One thing I wanted to talk about is this idea of the market. The marketplace talks about return on investment. Every time someone says about renovation, oh, every time they talk about renovation, I don't care if it's television, if it's the news, if it's designers, if it's uh, any kind of major vlog or any kind of major corporation. If they're talking about renovation, they all say the same thing, right? They're all preaching kitchens and bathrooms. Got to renovate your kitchen and your bathroom. 
Do you really? Like, let's ask the question, why? Why the kitchen and the bathroom? Because they're the worst return on investment. So why is everybody telling us to do something that doesn't make any sense? Based on the information I just gave you and the information collected here, if I was an advocate for consumers, I'd have to say your best move is to paint your house inside, outside, right? Go build yourself a deck. Watch a couple of videos on how to build a deck. Click the link right here because you buy $4,000 of material, now your house is worth another eight or $10,000. Wow, you could do that in a week. Not too many people living in the houses over here in this part of the economy making $4,000 a week. Nobody is making $4,000 a week who's not part of the 20% club. But if you're a DIYer, you can do that. That is a phenomenal opportunity. So why isn't anybody saying, hey, you should go build your own deck? It's not that tricky. You know, like, if you know how to use a measuring tape and a pencil and a, and a skill saw, you can build a deck. It's not that tricky. Just saying. Why aren't the designers in the TV shows saying, hey, you should paint your house? If the number one, number one thing to do to, for, for, for your house was to paint it, well, that's great advice, I guess, if you own a paint company. But don't forget, if you're in the renovation business and you're a big company and you want to sell products, you've got to create the demand. So here's the deal. Last year, Home Depot and Lowe's sold, I think, was it something like 160 or 180 billion dollars worth of renovation product? That's not bad. That's a hell of a year. You put that in perspective, the NBA grossed 40 billion dollars. Okay? Now, 40 billion for the NBA, 160, that's four times larger than the NBA. Just Home Depot and Lowe's. That's a huge business. And they're not the only guy in that business. It'd be like, in the renovation business, there are like 120 NBAs. <laughs> that's, that's how huge this is, all right? It'd be like having 120 organizations that all had the National Basketball Association and they all had their own LeBron James. That's how massive this thing is. And they're all four times bigger. I'm not making fun of the Basketball Association. I'm basically just letting you know how huge home renovation market is, how much money is behind it, and how much you're being taught by the machine how to spend your money to their benefit, not yours. Think about it. You can remodel a kitchen and get almost all your money back. And you hire somebody, you can do that. If you do it yourself, you make money. In a lot of cases, you can't even renovate a kitchen or a bathroom and make money, even by yourself. Just because the amount of tools you gotta buy to do all that specialty work. And you're gonna need to hire help along the way. But a lot of these other projects that we came up with, building a deck, painting your house, inside and outside, doing your windows, doing the siding. Even that stone, anybody can install that stone. It's fusion stone, it's 20 bucks a square foot. You know how to use a drill? You screw it on, it's done. You can get that job done yourself, right? These kinds of projects are the ones that homeowners should be doing. There's one more project that we haven't talked about yet that is massive industry, that's huge return on investment, and that's installing hardwood flooring. Okay, so let's get into this real quick, because I don't want to get too, and I, I'm not trying to vilify Home Depot and Lowe's. They're giving you exactly what you want. They get you options to buy everything that you need, and it's really super convenient. But at the end of the day, they're putting things on the shelf that make them the most money because they got options, right? And they're in business, they gotta make money. And so when you shop there, you are already saying, um, I'm going to buy whatever you think is best for me at the price that you need to make lots of money so that you can afford to hire people to have opinions and voices to tell me what to, I should like, and then I'm gonna go and buy it. And it's really kind of messed up. Um, so if you think about it this way, as a homeowner, you buy a house, you're buying one of these, right? 
It's got to it's got to keep the water out and it's got to maintain a certain amount of temperature and then you want it to be comfortable after that. Buying products that are high quality and renovating yourself makes you money. So just because kitchens and bathrooms aren't the greatest place for return investment doesn't mean they don't need to be done. Remember, if your rest of your house is renovated, the kitchen and bathroom needs to be too. And if you need to learn about how to do these renovations without making mistakes and how to hire contractors to help you with the process, then click the link here. This is the playlist from our whole do-it-yourself tour. All this information is available to help you out. Hope this has been useful. We'll see you soon.